Well, in my uh, contribution to the uh, discussion of kingdoms and dominions, uh, I'm going to uh, share with you some scripture that uh, there's, there's so many uh, on these subjects. But um, first off, let me state the concept of kingdoms and dimensions. We uh, dominions. We come from a limited arena of uh, intellect, uh, insight, based on the very fact that we're, we're human beings. We're, we're creatures created by uh, a very powerful and wonderful deity uh, by his authority, by his means, by his ways that are above our ways, that are above our understanding. Uh, I know that some wrestle with that concept, but that's their problem, not mine. Uh, I am thankful that that some of us are able to come to the place as believers to where that we can accept that we are not at the top of the pyramid when it comes to ability, intelligence, and capability. And that recognizing there are those things which are above, there are those things which are heavenly. We bring our place da ourselves down to the place of humility to where that we can consider that there is a broader and a much larger picture. And with that in mind, uh, I'm going to, uh, with a short uh, commentary, uh, just open up a little bit of a, a window, uh, kind of open the shades, so to speak, into a bigger picture of things. And for a few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about uh, kingdoms and dominions and um, open up the scope a little bit to where that we in ourselves can begin to examine, ask some questions, do some research. And examine our, our personal takes and beliefs and see how they line up with the, what's out there in the real world, uh, the real cosmos. Let's take it out to beyond this real world and into the cosmos. First off, realizing that our scope of examination is limited because of who we are and what we are. Very important that we examine from that viewpoint of humility. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, first off, from the King James Bible. Uh, if you want to turn with me to Daniel, the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, and go to the second chapter, verse 44. Here we are reading. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, without opening this up and taking it into too many different layers, let's just simply look at what is being plainly said here. It's recognizing that uh, in a time and in a, a, a set of uh, days of kingdoms that the God of heaven will set up a kingdom and it will never be destroyed and that it will not be left to other people now the uh, implication here being is that uh, and it's followed up in the next sen sentence of explanation is that the kingdoms of peoples are left to others certain ones inherit their place to the throne passed down to them from others, and that uh, those kingdoms are only as strong as uh, their position and their place in time, in events, uh, where it says, and it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. In other words, the kingdom of God shall stand forever. Now, without getting into too many layers on that, I just wanted to read that scripture. To let you know that uh, there is only one king in this kingdom, the kingdom of God, and it shall stand forever. Uh, letting you know, uh, the scripture here in Daniel is telling us that the kingdom of God is everlasting. It's not a temporary thing, as are the kingdoms of men. So, first off, let's separate here when we're talking about kingdoms, that the kingdoms of men are temporary. They are not permanent. They are not established forever, but the kingdom of God is. 
Uh, let me read in the New Testament now from Matthew 4, 8 through 10. And this is uh, the time when Jesus was on a very long fast and he was uh, in a situation to where in his humanity he was being tempted by Satan. And let's, let's read that in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, let's go back uh, without stopping for commentary yet. Let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, uh, reading in King James uh, chapter 1 verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them talking about man have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth now I want you to mark Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and also include with it verse 27 through 28. And I want you to go back on your own, and I want you to carefully dissect what these scriptures are saying. Uh, the English is a very full-worded version of what God said in the original Hebrew through Moses. But it is very accurate. Uh, the Septuagint backs it up by detail, uh, which was, of course, the Greek translation from the Hebrew. And we later took it uh, through its course down to the uh, more modern English. Now, wh what we want to look at here is from the perspective of mankind. When we begin to examine uh, eternal kingdoms, we're talking about things that are above mankind, of course. So it's difficult for us to model by concept a way of truly uh, coming in perspective of what that really means from our viewpoint. Because uh, our, everything that we know of changes in our world. Everything that we witness here uh, is temporal and, and goes through phases and changes uh, through strengths and weakness and demise and uh, from establishing to demise. But with the eternal kingdom of God, it's not that way. So it's hard for us as human beings to fathom or to understand how to function as a citizen or member of a eternal kingdom because of our preparation. And so for, for to understand that, we must go to a place to where that we are prepared uh, and schooled in the spirit by God to be able to understand our place in an eternal kingdom and to find our place by his leading. And and without going too far with that right now, because that's, that's a much broader and deeper subject, let's look at uh, the difference between dominions and kingdoms. Uh, when we looked at the verse there from Genesis where man was being made, uh, mankind, and the reason we say mankind and not just a man is because it says uh, that let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all of the earth. Uh, them, not just one. Now, if it had been talking about just one man, such as the, the character of Adam, then, then it would have not said them. It would have just said him. So you see, uh, dominion was something that was given as a decree of responsibility. 
and also as a limitation. Uh, now let's talk about that just a little bit. And the best example that I can use to help explain limitations of dominions and uh, restriction of dominions would be to uh, take you to the place of where a particular prophet in the Bible had prayed a prayer and asked for help, and it took the angel many days to get to him. Well, my question would be, why would God even need to use an angel when he could answer a prayer immediately? He could he could send help immediately by his own power, by empowering you or uh, changing situations behind you. Why use an angel? Because uh, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, that, that is a good question, isn't it? Uh, it's because of dominions, dominionships. Dominionships are uh, places of responsibilities ordained by God. Uh, man has a dominionship, and the angels have dominionships. Uh, some might rank, uh, might measure this as ranks, uh, places of position, power, thrones. Uh, but we're not going to take it to that level. We're, we're going to look at it. Uh, as though you were in the military, if, uh, and those of you who have been in the military or know anything at all, you know it all operates by rank, and that uh, lower ranks recognize the authority of higher ranks as being uh, able to issue an order, and then if that order is handed down to them from a higher dominion of rank, so to speak, it's your place as a member of a lower ranking file within that order to carry out that order or to uh, delegate to someone in a lower rank than you. But the responsibility is carried with the order. And in so speaking that to you, if, if an angel uh, is dispatched from anywhere within the dominionship of the angelic realms, uh, then he is responsible to carry out the order. And it's his privilege to be able to do that, to serve in that capacity, and to give a good report. So you see, wh what we're saying here is, is that God involves us and allows us to be participants. It gives us a use and a place within the kingdom of God, working within dominions and ranks. Uh, here on earth, as ministers for the gospel, we are in service to the kingdom of God. And within the kingdom of God, there are places of rank and levels of dominion under the kingdom of God. And in some cases, uh, there are angelic ministries, and there are ministries which are within the reach of man. And we're responsible, each of us, for his own uh, answering to God with a good report. So if God issues an order or a command or an instruction to us through his word that we obey, we, within our dominion of responsibility, which God plainly said here in Genesis chapter 26, that our dominion is over all the earth, that in the things of the earth, we're responsible to give a good report. Uh, now, the angelic host uh, are responsible to serve God in their service with relationship in the assistance as part of the team, so to speak. Uh, it's kind of like uh, in a kingdom where you have knights and you have soldiers. Uh, we know that different things are expected of one with regard to the other by expectation. Now, I know this seems like a very simple uh, illustration about kingdoms and dominions, but it's where we start. Uh, the study of kingdoms and dominions goes into other places. So in finishing up, I'm going to take the next few minutes to visit those places a little bit because they take us into another realm. Let's look at, uh, we read from Genesis chapter 1, uh, but let's just think about Genesis chapter 1. The servant Moses, for instance, the Lord revealed and showed Moses many great mysteries. And Moses did the 
the human translation of those great mysteries. For instance, the Bible is written to mankind. The Bible wasn't written to angels. The Word of God is translated from the visions and from the knowledge and experiences that God gave to Moses to a language of communication in its most simple form uh, to a way that we are able to look into the understanding of what Moses told us in its simplest form of interpretation. And when we're reading the Bible, we have to understand that this is condensed knowledge. The Bible does not tell us everything, but it tells us very important things. Uh, God communicates to us through his written word, which were given to us through holy men as they wrote according to the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, in the Bible. And that is the Lord including us, mankind, as ministers one to another. The Lord could just as easily take each one of us by audience, and he could communicate to us individually all these things. But the Lord includes us in our calling. And when we're obedient, as Moses was and other writers, then the Lord will include us in our place within the dominionships. Now, also, you have local dominions, you have regional dominions, and you have cosmic levels of dominions. Uh, the Earth is very local. The solar system is very local. We know now that when we look into the windows provided to us uh, through means such as the technology of the Hubble telescope, that the universe, the cosmos, is much larger than what we ever imagined it to be in the creations. That even just our home galaxy here, the Milky Way galaxy, is so vast that it would take an eternity to explore it had we the means to travel and explore it. So what we're saying here is that there were many levels of dominions under the kingdom of God. So we're looking at a local dominionship here. So when you begin to examine the kingdom of God, don't limit the kingdom of God to what you know from observance of a local position. The kingdom of God is authoritative over us and to us by communication, not us to it. So understand that we are learning of the kingdom of God from God's word, through God's anointing, by our spiritual investigations and inquiries. But it comes from God that we would learn of it from God. In our human intellect, we are not capable of going to those places. Oh, yes, the Lord blessed us with the ability to do many things, and it is a blessing. But it is not within our ability to dictate things that come from the higher order. Now, I know this seemed a little bit, shall we say, clinical. And at times, every now and then, we've got to do a study uh, from a clinical position to where that we're investigating, looking at it with the tools that we know how from our own intellect and using the tools that are available to us in writing to examine. But only the Lord can take us to those spiritual places of understanding. So in topping this off here, I want to try to keep it under 20 minutes. I'm going to ask you to explore the spiritual places by finding yourself a place of privacy with God in your life. To ask the Lord to open your understandings to a bigger picture that includes understandings not only in your mind, not only what you're trained, what only you're taught by academics, but places he can take you in the spirit to understand the things of the spirit in a way that you have never before been able to even come to question within yourself. Dear Lord God, I ask in ending this discussion today, part one, that you will take us to places in our experience with you that will open new doors of opportunity in our relationship with you, Lord Jesus, 
to understand your kingdom in greater ways and greater experiences as we struggle to walk in the spiritual places with you. Be our help. Be our enabler. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen. And farewell until our next time together in our Bible Topics discussions. God bless you.